Hello everybody, my name is Shai and I decided to make this video about 10 seconds ago because I'm having such an amazing day and I just felt really excited to sit down and draw some cards. I honestly can't really put my finger on why I feel so good. There's actually quite a bit of tension and unpleasantness happening in my external environment, but it's like it doesn't even <laughs> it's like it can't it can't touch me. I feel completely even though I'm aware of it, I'm. it's not like I have my head in the sand, although I think that's a totally fine thing for people to do, <laughs> to, to ignore things, but I'm not, I'm not ignoring things. I know I'm aware what's ha of what's happening and I'm handling it. And I still feel like this is one of the best days I've had in a really long time, even though I've been having quite a few good days lately. I just feel so <sighs> awesome right now. <laughs> and somehow this has something to do with Venus and Mars. I am filming this a few hours before they are exactly conjunct and that's why I actually have two, three decks here. I'm drawing from one deck for Venus energy, another one from Mars, so it's the Star Child Tarot for Venus, Guardian of the Night for Mars, because I feel like Mars has been guarding something. That's, I was going to pick a different deck, but it was like, no, Mars has been guarding something and he's passing the torch. He's passing the torch. Um, because Venus is coming up behind him and he's giving her something, giving her a gift, and then she'll be speeding on her way. Because of course, Venus moves a lot faster than Mars, so whenever they're conjunct, it's because she's catching up to him, and then, you know, they have like a day where they're hanging out, and then she passes him and carries on, and it just goes around and around and around, right? So, <sighs> she's lapping him yet again, and there's a baton pass happening, and I'm not sure exactly what it's about, but this energy is very exciting and I feel like I'm about to float away. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is really multidimensional. I think this energy could be playing out for you on any level. Like this could be you and someone in your life. This could be some kind of really abstract polarity you're working through, like karmic stuff, ancestral stuff, like really big picture stuff. Um, it could be your inner world and your outer world. It could be something, you know, something passive, something active. Um, I'll, so I'll let you feel into how this is playing out for you, but we're going to look basically at, it's like a twin flame reading. And again, I use that phrase really loosely because everybody understands twin flames to be something um, different. Everybody has a different uh, interpretation interpretation of that. So that is very loose. I just mean it to mean a relationship between two parts um, that are somehow connecting in unity and that's why this other deck is in the middle we're gonna get some like overlapping center cards to see what is what's coming together what's like the center of the venn diagram so to speak so um yeah just uh please bear with me for a couple minutes while i draw the cards i don't like to talk when i draw the cards so
kept seeing this card in my head. It did come out. Um, okay, I'm just going to try to fix the lighting and then let me get into this. Okay, I think just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to refer to these cards as Venus energy and this side as the Mars energy and you guys can decide like what to apply that to in your life or just in the universe in general. So <sighs> we have some repeater cards. Both sides got the Ace of Cups. Both sides got two of swords. Mars has two of cups. Okay, I want to start with Venus going on her <laughs> spiritual journey, right? Eight of cups, leaving something behind, turning away from something, but going forward into the unknown, walking out into the unknown to seek a higher plane of existence, to seek richer pastures to find deeper emotional fulfillment. Um, this feels so... I mean, we got the tower here, right? This feels so much like... Venus is like coming up on Mars, doing a drive-by, but then she ultimately has to leave him behind. She has to leave him behind because she's simply faster, <laughs> faster than he is, right? Just think of the planets. She whizzes by him and just keeps going. I think, you know, a Venusian year is like 88 days or something. And a Martian year is like, I don't know. It's longer than an Earth year, right? It's like 500 days or something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but um, she's so much faster and she loves passing him by to bring him this love because he is not feeling in a place of fulfillment. <laughs> Mars is sitting here, five of cups, right? Disappointment, disappointment, and <sighs> feeling like he's always left with nothing. Like why, for like, it, this is like first you giveth and then you taketh away kind of energy. <sighs> but he is receiving love from Venus as she drives by him and it's like some kind of amazing planetary one night stand but then oh my god I won't see you again for years I think the next Mars Venus conjunction is in 2024 so you know three years from now right I'm just looking at the way the cards parallel, right? Like this Eight of Cups goes with the Five of Cups. So we have these complicated emotional feelings to do with feeling like Mars, feeling, Mars feels like he lacks love. Venus is seeking a higher level of love, perhaps that one that she feels and she wishes that Mars could give her, but he's just not there. She's seeking the nine and 10 of cups, right? The eight of cups, what comes after the eight of cups? The nine and 10 of cups, the nine of cups being like independent, sovereign, emotional fulfillment and 10 of cups being perfect bliss and harmony uh, with a happy family and happy community and love and peace all around, right? She's seeking that, but there's like a tragedy. <laughs> there is a tragedy here because Mars is only able to give this Ace of Cups. And the Ace of Cups is a beautiful energy, but it's like the beginning, the beginning of a wellspring of love. It's like Mar the, the Mars energy here is being activated. The love is being turned on. It is beginning to flow. This is like Mars is having a spiritual awakening and an awakening to love, but it's really young. It's like a young warrior type of energy. This is not a mature energy. It's a beginning and it's a start. And this Ace of Cups somehow corresponds with Venus's tower moment. So interesting. You know, this is not the first time I've seen this, like Ace of Cups being being uh, paired with a tower moment. I do not remember basically anything I say in readings, but I am remembering staring at something like this before. Yeah, because it was this deck too. It was the Star Child Tarot. I think it was, I don't remember when it was, but it was sometime in the last few months I did a Starseed reading and we had the Tower and the Ace of Cups. And 
it felt like emotional explosions, like the tower moment. I mean, you know, tower moments can come in any shape or form, but th that tower moment, I, re I remember feeling like it was an explosion of emotion. People having so many emotions, people being so emotionally sensitive that they can't contain it, and that the, like the emotional explosion itself is the tower moment. Um, I don't know what kind of situation would create, like, <laughs> I, I don't know, but it's like so much love, so much love is causing a breakdown of sorts. Um, I've also said this before, like breakups, breakdowns, and breakthroughs. So I think it depends what level you're tuning into this energy. Are you, because of course with any energy, we all tune into either like a, the lower frequencies of the energy or like the middle frequencies of the energy or the highest frequencies of the energy. And it just depends where you're at with this. And so I think if at this point in your life, if you're working on balancing masculine and feminine, like Venus and Mars type of energies, if you're working on balancing that in any way, shape or form, then you're going to be more in the more challenging, denser frequencies. And this will kind of resonate with you more like a break up or a breakdown, right? Things coming apart because you need to be realigned, right? You're, you're being realigned so that you can resolve this imbalance between masculine and feminine. And then you can later on, you, next time this comes around, right? Next time the same energy hits you, you'll be able to tune into the higher frequency of this energy. I have really, 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 really learned the importance of learning to tune into the higher frequencies of any given energy. Uh, for me, the example is Pisces season. I used to be come entirely almost incapacitated in Pisces season, like so exhausted because Pisces energy was really difficult for me. Um, I, like I don't have any Pisces in my chart except for my North Node, so it's an energy I'm always learning about and striving towards. And so Pisces energy would make me exhausted. It would, it would make me terrified. The new moon in Pisces, I would always have some massive fear-facing thing. And so the last Pisces season a few months ago, I was ready for the same kind of thing, but I found that I was able to tune into the higher frequencies of Pisces and I had this beautiful, blissful month full of like glowing light. And I was like, wow, I had no idea. I had no idea. I just thought that Pisces was this like oppressive and exhausting and tiring energy, but really it, its higher frequencies are like the most beautiful, the most light filled, the most joyous energies in the Zodiac, right? So it doesn't matter what energy you're tuning into. You can always choose to tune into, into a higher frequency of it. So that's what this is. You know, if masculine and feminine imbalance is an issue for you, and this could also just be inside of yourself, like with your chakras, with your solar plexus or your sacral chakra, getting them into balance, this if this is a more challenging moment for you, then this is like a breakdown or a break up. Um, but for anybody who has already gone through the processes of balancing their masculine and feminine, this is like an explosion of love <laughs> that changes your life. Because this tower moment doesn't have to be a tower moment that we typically think of, right? Uh, this particular tower card, I see this as like the temple of transformation. And I, for some reason I'm, be I'm being shown, I'm being given memories. Like my memory is complete crap and I don't remember anything, especially I don't remember anything that I channel in a reading. But I think the very first starseed reading I ever did, I think I called it the temple of transformation because this card was in it and I was like, you're going to go into the temple and be transformed. And because I had many personal experiences teaching me to understand this card as a, like the, it, the tower is a temple that you enter and you can enter it to be transformed. So if you can tune into the highest frequency of this energy and really find the balance between Venus and Mars, you will enter this tower. Instead of the tower crumbling, you will enter it bearing the cup, bearing the Holy Grail. Like what is the Ace of Cups? The Ace of Cups is the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail representing overflowing of love and light. Carry, carry the Holy Grail, carry the chalice, carry the Ace of Cups, carry it into the temple to be transformed. Look at these energies here. <laughs> I think this is, this kind of looks like a, like a sun and a moon, I guess, but you have two bodies here. I mean, this could easily be symbolic for Venus and Mars, right? These two planetary bodies here, bringing the lightning strikes down. <sighs> um, well, I'm talking about the Ace of Cups, Venus. Uh, so Ma Mars is interesting, interesting. I had got the impression that Mars was passing something to Venus, but 
This Ace of Cups, Venus was already holding it because the, the Ace of Cups was the bottom of the deck. I think I showed that to the camera. For me, the bottom of the deck is the energy that you have been carrying and that you're moving on from. So this Ace of Cups, Venus is handing over to Mars. She's flying past him and depositing this love into him. Literally this Ace of Cups, she picked it up, she's carried it around and she's giving it to him. This, this just, this pure, container of love, this pure shining light. She's just handing it to him out of no, <laughs> for no other reason other than it's just, that's where the love goes. That's who she loves. That's where the energy is needed. And there's no strings attached. It is complete, like non-attached love. She does, she's not expecting anything in return. She's not expecting to receive anything back. She knows actually that they won't be able to be together because she's flying past him. She's flying right past him, right? She, she has to leave him in the dust simply because that is the way their orbits work. But she knows that she will see him again. She knows she will see him again. She's gonna come back around uh, in a few years and see him again. And this is like, for some of you, this is like an energy of a soulmate person who you meet every few lives and maybe you have some kind of really intense romance <laughs> um, and you meet them and but it never it never works out um, I've actually met one of these people for me um, this guy I used to know and I just had this insane connection with him and in fact when I met him like he sat down next to me in class we were in university and he sat down next to me and um, we were both dressed in all black we both had black shoulder bags we were both writing in the same gray notebook with the same tree on it and we both were using the same purple pen i remember I, I looked at this guy like and it was just like electrical shocks going off um it, it was it was nuts um i never dated him or anything but we were friends for a few years and ah uh, i i always just thought in another life we would have been together in another life we would have been together and of course at the time this is before I woke up, you know, so years go by and I, and I wake up and I realize that I have since retrieved memories of us being together in other lives, but it's not, we're not meant to be together always, right? We're, we're just, we're together every once in a while, like every three or four lives we, we get together and, and that's, I don't know, I don't know the bigger picture of that yet, <laughs> but that that's what happens and some of you, this is related to that. Um, everybody else, this is like a bigger picture thing, but it's the same pattern, the same theme. This is something that comes around once in a while, right? But it's a repeating thing that goes many, many, many years and for some people many, 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 many lifetimes without happening and then bam. But it's like everything, everything you've learned, everything you've gathered, you exchange it, you exchange it, right? This love exchange is going on. And I think what, yeah, okay, it's being reciprocated and it's allowing both parties to find deeper clarity um because now i'm looking at two of swords two of cups two of swords ace of swords so mars at the bottom of his deck had the two of swords this is where mars was at he <laughs> the two of swords i mean it's indecision it's a lack of clarity it's not knowing the way forward it's use trying getting stuck in that loop of trying to use your mind to make a choice so that's this mars energy and this look at this frog he has been this is this is really profound i never really clued into how profound this card is this frog is clinging to a sword what would that do to that poor frog he would be cutting slicing himself up harming himself hurting himself literally because he's clinging to the sword why is he clinging to the sword because he doesn't want to fall into the water. Does that make any sense? He's a frog. He's a frog. He can go into the water. So Mars has been completely unaware of like what he truly is. Somehow this this somehow Mars didn't know that he was Mars. Somehow this frog like didn't know that he could swim, didn't know he was a frog. So whatever this Mars energy is applying to, there was some kind of massive lack of self-awareness like somebody did not know who they were on some kind of deep level but with this light of love coming in from this ace of cups this holy grail that is clearing that up and moving mars into this energy of the two of cups this 
union, even though it is temporary, right? This is the Two of Cups. This is not the lovers. Um, I guess just to simply explain, I, I see the Two of Cups as a smaller, more temporary version of the lovers. Still a beautiful card, still a powerful energy, but this is like... It makes a lot of sense to me if we're working along this metaphor of, you know, Mars, Venus flying past Mars, right? They have this one night stand, they have this beautiful two of cups, they come into this beautiful alignment, they have this moment of shared energy, they have this beautiful souls resonant for a little while and then it moves on and it's, it's not, um, it doesn't have to, have to be sad that, that it is moving on. Uh, there's an invitation here to understand the beauty in temporary situations and let go of the minds and the, the, the human's way of trying to make everything permanent. It doesn't need to be permanent, right? Venus is struggling a bit here. Two of swords, here she is. It's like she picked up his energy of indecision. I don't think she was feeling this way to begin with. She knew what she was doing, right? She was on her eight of cups journey. She was on her spiritual journey and then this Ah, she, she like a sponge, she, she absorbed <laughs> Mars's indecision, right? Like an empathic sponge. Um, and she helped him heal. She helped him heal from that, but now she has to release it, right? Venus must release this indecision. It's not hers. She picked it up from Mars. She picked it up. Um, it's almost like Mars is like more masculine, more mental way of operating really influenced her for a moment and she's going, oh, do I need to be more like that? Do I need to be more martial, right? Do I need to be more uh, mental? Do I need to make my mind? Do I need to be more logical? But it's like, no, <laughs> no, because she's not continuing down the suit of swords, right? What's next for her? Next for her is the ace of swords, the most beautiful of all the swords, mental clarity, a new idea, and... A clarity of mind where that that is so pure that it allows the mind to operate at its optimal level like the way it is supposed to be our human experiences have contaminated our minds have like twisted our minds to be these like calculating machines and that is not the highest frequency of the mind right the highest frequency of the over mind like the Arcturian overmind. This is this is this is a very Arcturian energy. Um yeah, the Arcturians are here. <laughs> they are here. Um <laughs> What am I trying to say now? I, I got I got sidetracked in my The Arcturians came in. Um some of you might have been able to feel that and it, d it distracted me. So <laughs> what was I trying to say? The the Arcturian overmind is observation, being able to observe all energies with complete lack of judgment and with complete non-attachment and just hold all energies, no matter how high or low frequency they are, and just hold them and like surround them with love and just contain them with love and hold them gently. Uh, even energies that are painful, even energies that the, your human mind would describe as dark or scary or dangerous. And this is also like completely dropping out of fear. This was a big message I was receiving this morning, actually completely dropping out of fear. There's a quote, I think it's from Dune. I haven't read or seen Dune, but I have seen the trailer and like fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer. That's what this is. This is dropping out of fear. And that is one of the gifts Venus is picking up from Mars. Martian energy, it's higher frequencies. Lower frequencies of Martian energy are react in fear. The highest frequency of like the pure Martian mind is the release of fear. The release of fear. It's this Ace of Swords. So that is Mars's gift to Venus. She is learning to be fearless and learning to use her mind as an observational tool, not as a calculator. The mind is for observing. The mind is not for calculating. Um, not anymore, right? <laughs> we don't need to use our mind for calculating anymore. So Venus is moving into 
fearlessness. And that, why is that important for her? That was what will take her on her spiritual journey because she is entering a period where she is walking into the unknown, like spiritually, energetically. She's like flying out into the quantum. She doesn't know what is ahead of her. This is, you know, for you guys personally on your spiritual journeys at some point, you know, our journeys get so weird and they get so unique and idiosyncratic that, you know, of course we can come together doing readings and we can talk to each other and compare notes and stuff. But at some point, the we each, as we get closer to our higher selves, we get even more individualized, right? We get even more specialized. And so there's like, we can kind of, you know, support each other and hold each other's hands, but we're each having this experience of doing it alone, right? D does that make sense? I've, I keep trying to describe this because I know we're never, we're never alone. That is something I absolutely know in every fiber of my being. We are never alone. We are always sur like surrounded with <laughs> our, like our family, right? We are never alone, but at the same time, on our spiritual journeys, every step we take, even though we are surrounded by family, we are still taking that step alone. I think you guys, I think you guys know what I mean, right? We have this experience of doing it alone, especially in our human bodies, because that is why we're here, right? We're here to pave the way. And so in order to advance on your journey, and especially getting through these kind of tower moments, we need to be tuning into the frequency of fearlessness because fear is the mind killer. Fear is what will hold us back. Fear is what will stop us. Highest frequencies of our Arcturian energy are fearless because they fear no energy. They know that no energy is bad. No energy can harm them. And they know that they can use all energies for good and they just hold it and they just hold the energy and they just love the energy no matter what it is, no matter what it is holding it softly, right? So yes, Venus moving into fearlessness so that she can continue on her journey and spiral out to higher and higher levels. And meanwhile, Mars, King of Wands. Look at this. This lion's crown is lighting up. I don't get the impression that... I think... Mars was not really on a spiritual journey before this, although of course you could say that all journeys are spiritual, but it's like, did, you, did he know that, right? Mars didn't know he was on a spiritual journey. He was in survival mode. He was this frog clinging to indecision, clinging to his mind so that he didn't fall in the water. But all, with all of this cups energy, he saw something in the water that he loved so much that he decided to dive in. Venus was like so beautiful and so appealing to him that she di that he dives into the water just to be with her. And even though he can't swim with her, right? He can't keep up. She's going to keep swimming away, but now he's in the water and he's like, "Oh, it's okay that she's swimming away from him because he's home now and he understands. He's like, "Oh, I can swim. I'm in the water and I can swim." And now he knows what to do. Now he feels empowered. Now he can move forward as the King of Wands. And now his crown chakra is lighting up and clearing out and coming online. And he is going to be beginning, he is going to be beginning his own journey. <sighs> okay, and the Oracle cards, pretty self-explanatory. I think they actually came out this way. You're very close to achieving your goal. Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. So that's two lion energies. And this card that was flashing in my mind while I was shuffling, beautiful to see it coming out. A new start is coming. A new start. And for these particular energies, the Venus energy and the Mars energy, they're having a new start and they're not going to be like together side by side physically, but they're always connected, right? And they will see each other again. So they're each going to be walking their own paths for now, but they're freshly balanced and they have benefited greatly from meeting and exchanging energies and now moving forward in a fresh new start so that when they meet again, and they will, and even, even while they're apart, they're still energetically connected, right? But one day they will meet again and it will be a brand new start. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.